All right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank Assist for giving us this opportunity to present what I think is uh, some really valuable information uh, that I've been talking with security guard companies every week, uh, about every week for literally years. Today we'll be discussing how to master the art of selling security guard services. If you're involved in actively selling security guard services, which I believe most of you are, then you know how hard it's gotten to not only talk to potential customers, how it's gotten even harder to get those potential customers to become actual customers. But before we start talking about uh, the hows, we'll be talking about some of the reasons why things have become so difficult in regards to accessing your buyers. I believe that providing you uh, with a few insights behind the why will make it easier to understand the reasons that the points we'll cover in this presentation are so critical to your success. Let me offer a word of warning before we get started. There are semester long classes at some of the most prestigious business schools that talk about uh, some of the points that we're going to discuss here. So our objective is not to provide you with everything that you need in 45 minutes, uh, but to give you a solid foundation and get you on the path to mastery. So let's talk about who we are. Uh, my name is Courtney Sparkman and I'm the founder and CEO of Officer Reports. Uh, we are a software company that provides security guard management software to security guard companies globally. Uh, but don't consider me to be, you know, a software developer, a coder, that's not me. I actually walked in your shoes for quite a while. So back in 2011 to 2013, I worked in business development for a regional security guard company. At that time, we were doing about $26 million in business a year. And even before that, I founded a security guard company with my father in Chicago. We ran that business from about 2000 to 2002 to about 2010 before we sold that. And prior to that, I worked in sales and marketing research, which I believe gave me a lot of the skills and knowledge that I used to make my career in the security guard industry a lot more successful. So after hearing from me, you'll be hearing from Wendy Grottero, founder of Grow Digital, a full service digital marketing firm. But in addition, Wendy is also professor of social media and digital marketing at University of Texas right there in San Antonio. But unlike a lot of professors that are just uh, academic, right, theoretical, Wendy's had the uh, opportunity to apply all of, her all of her learnings in key roles in marketing and business development in numerous technology and service companies. Uh, I've been working with Wendy for about eight months, uh, helping officer reports improve our digital footprint. And I can say that she's done an outstanding job. After Wendy, you'll be hearing from Joel Russell, CEO and founder of Cartnell Consulting. Cartnell is in the business of helping security guard companies take their businesses to the next level. So Joe has about 35 years of experience in the contract security industry. Uh, and from 1989 to 2001, he owned and operated his own security guard company right there in Texas, Triad Protective Services. Uh, Joe was able to expand his service from Texas to about five other states. Not to mention, he was awarded the National Blue Chip Enterprise Award by the US Chamber of Commerce uh, at which point I don't think a security guard company had ever received before. So let, let's start off um, by taking a look at the definition of sales and marketing. Sales is typically defined as the act of selling something, while marketing is defined as the activities that are, that are involved in making people aware of your company's products, uh, generating leads, and making sure that your products and services are available, available to be bought. In the past, many company sales professionals would look to their traditional marketing departments to help them generate uh, warm leads. But that paradigm ha has shifted. In today's digital world, I believe that the lines between sales and marketing have begun to blur in a very substantial way. The reason being is that smaller companies, especially ones working with thinner margins, sound familiar? <laughs> especially ones with thinner margins, don't have the resources, capital, and or people to staff a traditional marketing department. And honestly, I, I don't think you really need one. So why is that? 
So really to understand why these changes are occurring, we must understand what it means to sell security guard service in a digital age. Back when I started selling security guard service, it was a lot easier. People were a little more willing to pick up the phone and talk with you and it's sometimes even invite you into their offices for an appointment. And if you sell security guard services prior to 2001, you probably remember the heyday of being able to walk into an office building downtown someplace, uh, get an appointment at the front desk without showing an ID and actually getting to talk to a buyer. Just like that, uh, things changed. Admittedly, I wasn't in the security industry at the time, but I still remember uh, being able to walk into a building, talk to the receptionist, have her ask you a couple of questions and then put you on the uh, calendar to talk to somebody in an hour or two. I mean, who wouldn't love to go back to that? But selling in a digital age has been largely influenced by the digitization of our lives via the internet. The internet has completely changed the way that we buy things. If let's say you want to go to a movie, uh, what, you, what you're going to do is you're going to go, jump on the internet, go to a site like Fandango to read viewer reviews of the movie. Uh, you might go to YouTube to watch some trailers uh, of that movie. If you're going to buy a book, you're going to go to Amazon.com, read the reviews left by other readers. You might even check out other books written by the author previously. This buying behavior is especially true when it comes to products and services. So as an example, just the other day, I was looking to purchase some security cameras uh, for my home. I made my decision on what to purchase after I, I read the Amazon reviews, went to the company's website, and jumped on their YouTube channel uh, to see what the installation process for those cameras was like. And this is just a secret that we're gonna keep between me and you guys. In fact, I'm not even allowed to make a purchase in my house without doing some type of background research and investigation. I literally bought a set of spatulas, kitchen spatulas, uh, on Amazon about two months ago. Once the spatulas got here, my wife opened up the box. She looked at the spatulas. She looked at me. She looked back at the spatulas, looked at me and said, uh, what did the reviews on these spatulas say? And I'm thinking, come on, man these are plastic spatulas. So I was like, no, I didn't read the reviews. So she looked at me, rolled her eyes, said something under her breath that I probably wouldn't have appreciated and walked away. Literally rolled her eyes and walked away. So <laughs> if you're anything like us and you have access to a computer or a smartphone, you're probably pretty similar in the way that you're making your buying decisions. Uh, again, this type of buying behavior has been empowered by the internet. In the past, in order for a buyer to learn anything about your company and the products or services that you sold, uh, they had very few resources to turn to. You know, so they might have seen an ad that you ran in an industry publication, or maybe they received some type of mailer in the mail. But no matter what vehicle they used to uh, learn about your company, that, that process had to be complemented by either a visit from a salesperson or at least a conversation with one of your salespeople. But in the digital age, there is an abundance of, an abundance of information the buyers have access to all without having to talk to your salespeople. If they want to know about your company, they go, they go to your company website. If they want to know what your customers think about you, they go to your Facebook page or your Google business page. If they wanna know about the type of people you hire, what do they do? They jump over on LinkedIn. Again, all of this information can be gathered without ever having to talk to a salesperson. In fact, buyers nowadays expect and need that level of access. So why do they need that level of access? And that's because their days are filled with tasks and duties that have nothing to do with security. So don't get me wrong. I think it's very important to have a trained security officer at a facility providing good security. But at the same time, your prospective customers are dealing with tenants who have complaints, infrastructure that needs to be maintained, revenue goals to hit that affect their bonuses, 
And in some cases, they're even dealing with lawsuits and any number of other issues that you don't know about. In other words, security guard service will more than likely not be at the top of their list of things to address. Well, until it's time to solicit bids. So according to a recent report, uh, the accessibility between business to business vendors or B2B vendors and your customers is shrinking even further. Uh, again, that's because of the ease of access to information uh, and the increased workloads that your buyers are experiencing. Today, 93% of business buyers search online to gather information about vendors before making any buying decisions. This means before your sales team ever reaches out or talks with a prospective customer, the process of making a buying decision has already started. To further underline the importance that the internet has for buyers uh, buying decisions, there's another study that says that buyers are 70% through their purchasing decision before the buyer ever talks to a salesperson. Think about that. Your buyers are 70% through the decision-making process before they even contact you. So what does that mean? To me, it means that if you aren't engaging with the buyer before they reach out to you, you are way behind the power curve and probably have little chance of influencing that buyer's buying decision at all. So based on changes that we've seen in the buying process and the abundance of information available to buyers, security guard vendors need to start considering uh, processes that take into account the way that buyers are making their buying decisions. For security guard companies, I think that the days of just going the old school route of cold calling are dying. In the digital age, you have to combine all of your old school, old school soft skills with all of the learnings and tools that the internet provides. So with that being said, I I'm going to turn over the presentation to Wendy so she can provide you with a mini MBA in digital marketing, followed by Joel Russell, who will, help, uh, will, who will help you make sure that your old school sales skills are everything that they should be. And Wendy, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Courtney, for your lovely introduction and talking me up so much. So I hope not to disappoint everybody. Let's, let's get into um, marketing doesn't work. Have you heard this before? I have. And I have come to the conclusion that that's what people say when they don't know how to do it. So this, through this presentation, we're trying to get people up to speed with how the buyer's behavior has changed. So <clears throat> Courtney had talked about sales versus marketing. So the act of selling something is sales. Uh, but without the marketing component, it's 100% one-on-one touch points, which means that uh, without leveraging all the tools in, that digital marketing gave you, your sales team has the burden of making all of those contacts personally, right? So marketing is all of those activities and touch points to educate the market about your product services and people. So think about the five to 10 touch rule to build trust. This is, this means that they even are aware of your brand and would consider you for um, one of their projects. So if, if, especially if you're going up market and you want a bigger project to work on or a bigger account, you have to think that these people already have some vendors in mind. So in order to get into that short list, you're going to have to do some things that get you out there and seen and visible as a viable vendor for their um, new account. So think of your website as your home base. And there's all these things that you could do out in the internet to get people to see your website. And these things could be distributed through your social media, um, advertising on Google or social media, good search. So having content and things that are searchable, uh, online directory listings. That's a really good strategic approach with getting your company seen. Sometimes you have to pay for those listings and that's okay. Uh, an email strategy where you do 
uh, different types of emails where it's one-on-one -on -one emails where you support your sales team or you do email blasts. And then there's also YouTube videos or other video marketing that has been uh, catching a lot of traction. The algorithms on all the digital platforms really love video content as well. Obviously that has a lot of challenges to put something reasonably decent together, but um, you don't have to film live people and you, you can probably look at other ways to, to reduce those costs. So think of your website as um, the home base, right? So you want to drive as much traffic to that site. And then once people get to your site, they have to have a clean and lovely experience. So think of immediately letting people know what you offer. I know it sounds simple, but you'd be surprised how many companies bury what they offer on the second or third page of their site. Right at the top, talk about your security guard services. Um, and then also be sure to mention your secret sauce. Why are you better than anyone else in your market? So hopefully you understand what makes you unique or gives you a competitive edge. Um, so think of those things that are what make you special. So more about um, is it your technology that you use to manage your guards and forces and you, you have a good handle on them? Do you hire the best talented people? Um, do you have certain routines or what are those things that make you really special? Then there's this thing we call third party validation symbols. Uh, it's a big fancy word, but basically all it is is showing uh, that other people, not you guys, are talking about your services. So work towards getting reviews, awards. Obviously being a part of this affiliation should be on your website because it shows that you take your um, industry very seriously and that you wanna be a part of something bigger and be the best security guard company that you can be. And then any other reputation badges. So <clears throat> any other learning, continuing education or um, anything that you could display on your site that shows that you are, you take that this, this very seriously and that you're really dialed into what the industry needs. Um, and then I like to say, have a clean, clear path to a simple contact form. Don't make it complex, don't bury your contact forms, have calls to action, which are called um, buttons or links throughout your site that make it really easy for somebody to fill out a form to contact you. I've seen a lot of websites where people don't do that. Okay, so let's break this up into a few phases. If, if this seems overwhelming to you already, um, I want you to think of this in pieces, little chunks that you wanna get through. So let's build your foundation, phase one. Uh, pull up your website, pull up all your marketing uh, across your, your social media. Now look at your branding, your logos, your colors, your fonts, and then the way that you message things. Is it consistent? Is it fresh? Uh, does it look haphazard and thrown together? Well, that's the impression that you're going to give in the marketplace. So think of cleaning that up and setting your standards. Uh, because if people are Googling you or looking you up, they want to see that it is consistent because they know that you do consistent work. It's, it's really interesting how that psychology plays into a decision uh, with which vendor that they're going to go with. Now, go deep on your geo-regional words. That's a fancy term for zip codes, metro areas, um, and then use those words throughout your site for all the places that you want to service. That's the way that you could pop up uh, for, for those searches. And also when somebody lands on your site, they want to be sure that you'll take care of them in their area. <clears throat> and then make sure that your website has these elements, a homepage, an about, a services, and a contact form at minimum. This is your foundation. So if you're missing any of those, you need to make sure that you get those uh, pages worked on immediately. Hey, Wendy. Now, yeah. For the about us page, what type of information should security guard companies have on the about us page? Great question. I think it should be both the about the company and what makes you special a little bit more in detail. And then the second part would be your people. So who are the leadership? What are they like? What are their backgrounds? Brag. Um, I know it's hard for a lot of people to brag about how amazing they are, but you got into this business because you're probably you have a history in um, the armed services or police work or any other uh, part of that industry that you need to brag about that. That has to be something that you highlight with how many years of experience your team might have as a whole as well. Good question. Um, 
And then a, you want to have your Facebook and a LinkedIn business profile page, not a fake uh, user account, but an actual business profile page, because that is where you can actually eventually start to run promotions. You have a lot of features in the business pages, like booking appointments, collecting information, and other marketing tools that you could use. Then you also need a nice and clear Google My Business account. So fill that out for the profile information uh, completely. So once you have all that done, you can get on to phase two. And I like to call this the rule of threes just to make it easy on you. Um, you need to, to create a minimum of 12 posts for social media and your Google My Business account. Don't neglect that. Make sure that they're the right sizes and branded. So you've already got your consistent branding done, right? You've got your colors, your fonts, the, the images that you want to use. And then make, make these in either 800 by 800 or center them with some bleed room at 1200 by 900. Um, and then here are some ideas. So you could do either three reviews or customer quotes, little mini case studies. So if you're going after specific industries that you want to grow into, like shopping malls or something like that, you would probably want to do three case studies about shopping malls and post about that. Um, I like facts and industry information. So three safety or security facts and posts about your company or services, uh, three tips, uh, three brags about your employees. Again, highlighting how amazing your employees are with their backgrounds and experiences, um, in the industry or three, three quick videos of a tour or how you work. So behind the scenes, like it doesn't have to be a nice big fancy presentation, you'd be surprised at how much traction these on-site uh, authentic videos can get. Okay. Now that yeah, you have some, some content to distribute and you have a good foundation, now it's time to actually think about promoting. So schedule and plan all your posts and rotate them by topics. So if you put together a few of these threes, you want to rotate them. You don't want to to do a series of three in a row because you want to have a lot of variety of content um, that you want to post throughout the month or throughout the year. So also create a social media advertising account to boost your posts to your target audiences. This is, this is like simple on page promoting one of your posts. So if you post something on your social account, all you have to do is just boost that to um, people with selected in your area that might have business owner or decision maker type titles. Um, and then if you have a customer list or target list, you can actually use that um, for social media. You could upload that as a custom audience, or you can create an email account and send out blast, email blasts, which would be like information about your organization or industry news. Be careful when you're doing email blasts, you don't want to overwhelm um, your list. So I would say in the beginning, no more than maybe two a month, unless you have really good content in those blasts that people are not unsubscribing. Okay. So Wendy, yeah. good question. So for the, uh, your customer list, so you can actually use your list of potential customer emails to target them in social media? You sure can, but it has to be big enough. And that's the problem. These rules of social media do change often. So once you get to phase three, you're going to have to be a little bit committed to learning these rules and staying on top of them. But if it, if it populates and it finds a, a good amount, usually over a couple thousand, um, you can then target those people on social, social media with boosting to them. So it's really exciting because they don't know you're, you're targeting them. It's a very soft touch point as opposed to an email, which is a little more aggressive. So a lot of people like to use the social awareness on their target lists. Um, but again, th those have to have a, a minimum critical amount for your area that you're targeting. And that's something to work towards. So build up your target lists, um, make sure that they're getting as close to the 10,000 mark as you can get. And that would be key to success with that strategy. Okay. Phase four, so this is pretty advanced. Um, this is where you get into highly strategic digital marketing. Uh, we call certain types of blogging and really deep content that's targeted for your prospects. So this is stuff they want to read. This is, these are things that they're probably Googling or looking up on their own. And you want to have that as bait for them when you're running your ads 
um, and your promotions and your sharing on social because this is how you collect those emails. We just talked about how valuable they are. So this is called an opt-in and this also gives you leads. So you could really rapidly build your email list and your network by having these things that are juicy that your targets and prospects want to use. So they have to be well, relatively well done, <clears throat> but think of these, these potential um, pieces. The five ways your security team can help build your brand, right? The top three signs that a tenant is gonna be a problem. So again, that's for your user. And that's something that they probably would wanna know and they would opt in to your list to download that and to read it. The top five ways that your security team can help with a smooth eviction. That is powerful information. You could promote that and get a lot of leads based on some of the, these type of, of bait is what I like to call them. Um, so you could also run Google ads to some of your content. So if you have really good strong lead magnets, people are already Googling those terms. So you can run these Google ads in a, in a geo region that you're targeting and get, get your leads this way. Um, advanced social media ads would be where you're using the back end and they're called dark ads and you're configuring these and targeting people and your, your um, competitors don't really know what you're doing because they can't see it on your page. So those are really strategic. Email sequencing and social setting, selling. Um, this is not an email blast to the list. This is where you send these like personalized email um, sequences like, hello, I met you at this place or um, I, I thought that you might be interested in X. And if they open it or if they don't open it, it goes in through a sequence until you could get them to get a schedule a meeting or a call with your sales team. Your sales team really appreciates this as they're so busy trying to talk and negotiate deals. If we're running these marketing sequences for them on the background, then that really helps save them time to focus on the customers and the leads that are active. Um, and then get your team trained for online advocacy and networking. So getting them, uh, to use tools like LinkedIn with a personal brand that also represents your business and industry well, getting them more involved into associations and events. Okay, big tips. Think of your online accounts and tools as tangible assets. So often people forget that these are actual things that have locks and controls to gain access. I come across many organizations that they'll just spin up some social media and then they lose the contact information. They don't know who's, who could get into it. And then they lose all that momentum and all that branding. So make sure that you always control that and you have some kind of protocol for access. Um, these are some of the tools that we like to use. So Google email, because then you could set up everything in a Google drive. Uh, Canva is a really fun tool. They have a free version that's pretty robust and that helps you design those social posts really easily without having to spend a lot of money. Um, but think of marketing as the only way to educate your market on your value. So you can't, you don't have to keep heat on price. And if you're going after those bigger accounts, then price matters to a point. It has to be a fair price, but they, they care more about the job being done right. So how can you do the job right? And you have to educate them on how you do the best job. Um, invest in your online brand so you can charge those rates that you want. And then if all else fails, and this seems really overwhelming, hire a pro. So contract somebody to consult you on setting it up and train you or um, hire an agency that for a reasonable rate that can help run some of this or team up with you and your team to, to get this done uh, properly so you don't in, get into any costly mistakes. There are some mistakes that you can make that can get your accounts banned or taken off the internet. So just be sure that if you do go down this path, that you do have somebody who's committed to learning the best practices and follows the rules. Thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to uh, Joel Russell and he's gonna get into the old school sales. I'd like to thank Courtney and the members of ASSIST for inviting us here today to uh, make a presentation. Um, first off, I want to say everything that Wendy said is exactly correct. Um, it is the digital age and all of those devices and programs need to be implemented to keep you up to speed with your competition. So with that in mind, we're going to step off and step back a little bit to the old, what I call old school sales. First off, 
no one is ever going to buy anything from you until they've heard your name five times. Now, that's an old advertising adage that has been around well before television, probably before radio, but it's still true today. You have to let the customer know who you are and what you do. So what now? Where do we go from here? You're scratching your head. You're thinking, well, okay, I can do that. The first thing you have to do is research your prospects. You have to identify who is a user of security guard service. What kind of a company are they? What's their company type? What industry are they in? What's the company size? And what is the job description and the title of the person at that company who is going to be the buyer or make the decision for hiring a security guard company? Real quick, users are always going to be companies where they're using security service already. Security guard services, they're there. One of your competitors is there. 99% of the business that you get in the lifetime of your company will be business that you took away from somebody else. Company types, you got different industries, hospitals, hotels, uh, manufacturing facilities. All of these have a different SIC code and you can identify them by those company types. Company size is also important. Just because IBM has a facility in your location, if they've only got 20 employees there, you're probably gonna waste your time calling. And this is the big click for all security guard companies. And I think probably all you people out there know that. There is no one single title of the person who makes decisions to buy security guard service. And this is what really causes us to do a lot of double research on companies. Because in some places it'll be a security manager and some companies it'll be the HR manager or the facilities manager, or the property manager. There's dozens of titles that we have to deal with. So if you're trying to buy a list, you, you can't just hone in on one particular job title. You have to be able to do the research to get it in the right box. Now, um, this is where, if you haven't already, I highly recommend that you do this get a salesforce.com account. Now, salesforce.com is the simplest and easiest and cleanest way to maintain your database. Your database is all the information that you collect on your known users, the prospects that you're going to be trying to obtain as clients, okay? This information, um, their email, their phone, their names, their company, all this information is kept in the database. You can schedule for the next time you want to meet with that person or the next time you want to call. Also, too, with Salesforce, it's got an email and a direct mail where you can generate activity right out of the Salesforce account at your, at your prospects. Of course, you know, you're going to log telephone calls, too, because you are still going to use the phone. I don't care what anybody says. The phone still works. It has to. When you're selling a product and a service like we do, and we're selling a, a, an average guard account, $200,000 a year is the budget on that. I mean, if it's a 168, that's an easy $200,000 purchase by that company. They're not going to take that purchase lightly. They're not going to order it over the phone. It is not an Amazon gift. They're going to do research, and they will do research on you, too. They want to make sure you're a legitimate company, that you've got experience, that you know what you're talking about. That's part of your presentation. That's part of your relationship building with those people, okay? Because our goal is to get there and get in front of them, get in front of them. Now, one hey, of so the Joe. So, hey, Joe, uh, I know a lot of companies out here using Microsoft Outlook and Microsoft Excel. Uh, as a CRM, what, what are your thoughts? Well, those programs were really not designed for a CRM. Um, you know, a CRM is a customer relations manager, man management program. So Salesforce has that built into it. 
And I don't work for Salesforce and I'm not trying to sell the product. I'm just telling you what I know works well for me. And Salesforce worked exceptionally well. I have multiple clients around the country. I always get them on Salesforce and, and, and they use it not only in the sales department, but also in the, the opportunities and also in the accounts so they can keep all their information from birth to death on Salesforce. One of the nicest aspects of Salesforce is that it has a, an email tracker built into it. So if I'm a salesperson for your security company and I'm sending out emails to potential clients, I'm looking for openings. Now, this page didn't come out very clear, but over on the far right, you can see uh, some numbers over here. And those numbers indicate the number of times that email was opened. If I send out 50 emails a day and I have 20 openings, guess who I'm going to call first? I'm going to call the guys that opened, the, opened it four times, three times, two times, because they're looking at my advertisement, it's fresh in their mind, and they may have passed it on to somebody else in their staff who may be the person who's really in charge of operating the security guard service. So this kind of information is worth its weight in gold to a security guard owner or your department salespeople. This is, you can, you can, you've got 20 people you can contact that already knows your company name. They already saw something about you. It's fresh in their mind. Jump on it. Don't just let it lie there. From, from making those contacts with those people and those, you know, those potential prospects, we want to set an appointment. You want to get in front of the buyer. You want to research them before you get there, but you know you want to listen to their problems, listen to their pain. Okay, people won't tell you honestly things on the phone, but when you get into a private office with them, they'll tell you everything. They'll tell you all the the evil that their current security has inflicted upon them and what it is that they really want. Listen 70% of the time. You don't have to go there and sell them on you're the greatest thing since sliced bread in the security guard industry. You're there to listen. They already know that you're a professional or they would have never allowed you to come in and see them. One thing you need to think about for your companies is developing an innovative offering. What is it that makes you special? What is it that makes your company stand out from the rest? Okay. Now, you can't say we're the biggest, we're the best, we're the fastest. Oh, no. Your, your competitors at Garda and Securitas and G4S, they're already out there telling them they're the biggest and the best in the world. Okay. You have to be the biggest and the best locally or regionally. And this is one place I just want to mention to you. It's not really sales, but it is. It's the customer service aspect. You, the local owners and operators, you always can beat the nationals or the internationals at customer service. If you apply yourself, they are not good at it. They treat their customers mostly as numbers and you are the local or regional guy who's been there for five, 10, 15 years. Just a quick story. In a 25 year span in Dallas, one of the large National Guard companies here had 24 branch managers, okay? Now, I know that for a fact because I used to follow them. And every time they changed branch managers, guess who I was going to call? I was going to call their clients. It makes sense. People like to deal with the same people. They don't want that change in there, jumping up and, you know, knocking over their apple cart every, every Monday morning. Also, too, you're the security professional. You're the one that knows how to operate a guard force. You're the one that knows how to hire, train, develop post orders, and make a company shine and make your company shine for them. They're not. 90% of the people that we deal with as clients in this industry don't know very much about security. They know they need it. Their boss told them so. But they don't know much because their job is something totally different, okay? So everything you say, they can they look at it like it's gospel. So be God, 
possible. Be a professional and you'll be happy. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about price because everybody has their own their own advent on price. But you know, know the market that you're working in. You have to research the market. Um, you know, when you're when you're you request bill rate and budget from the from the prospect. You get in front of them, ask them what their budget is. Don't be afraid. Just ask them. Okay. Also, ask them what the current pay grades of the officers of the service they're currently using. Sometimes you might get a big surprise. Okay. And then understand that you have to develop a labor versus billing methodology that works for your company. But I can tell you right now, um, anybody who's at a 60% split is going to be in pretty good shape. So if I pay my officers 15 and I'm billing that customer $25 an hour, my bill rate's 60%. Okay. And then once you've got all this information amassed and you're ready to get that proposal and put it together in that nice professional binder and take it there um, and deliver it to the, the customer, now you're ready. Okay. So, you know, always request the opportunity to make a presentation, even if you don't, even if they don't want a presentation, still ask if you can do it. Now, you can easily develop a quick presentation on a PowerPoint, 10 or 12 slides. You know, basically it just copies from your proposal documents and you can run through that with the client. If they don't want to do that, make sure that you want to deliver this proposal in person. You're not going to send this through the email. I don't care what they tell you, ask for the appointment again to take that proposal to deliver it to them in person. At least give them the opportunity to open it up and go through. And that's when they've got, that's when you've got them. They're looking at the price. They're always going to turn to that section first. That's what I've seen a hundred of them do. And then they may have some legitimate questions. Okay. Where's your COI, your certificate of insurance? Uh, you know, can you give me any more references than the ones that you supplied me with? Um, Etc. Whatever they're interested in, answer those questions right there for them and fix it. Now you've got them where you can ask for the sale. Now I know they're going to probably tell you, well, I have to show this to so and so and so and so, and we have to have more input before we can make a decision. But that doesn't stop you from looking him dead in the eye and saying, Mr. Client, I want your business, and our company will take care of you, and I'm here to tell you that I'm going to take care of you. When you say that to them face to face, man to man, there's no piece of paper in the world that can break that mold. So that's one power that you have, but you don't utilize it if you're sending it to them in an email. You got to get up and take it out there and see them. After the proposal is delivered, well, you just don't forget about it and go home and have a cocktail. Send them a thank you letter. And let me say this. Okay, email is nice, but a personalized card in, in the U.S. mail, if you can depend on it to get it there, uh, the U.S. mail, uh, sending a personalized card is the way to go. People think you took the time. It means something to them. You can put a little note in there. And, you know, that really can help you cement a deal. Also, if it's not cemented yet, you got to keep following up. Don't ever quit following up. When they finally get to the point where they said, well, we selected somebody else, that's not the end of the world, okay? There's plenty of things you can say at that point too. I mean, I used to always say, well, Mr. Smith, I'm glad you selected somebody. I hope you're gonna be happy with them. But in the event that you don't, you know you can call on me and I'll be here, okay? Then continue to follow up, send them emails, send them letters, Send them other advertising. Someday down the road, someday down the road, they're going to wake up and say, whoa, we made a mistake. Or we hired the wrong company. Or we're not getting the service that we expected. You want to be there so you can move right in behind it. And that's the end of my presentation. And I hope everybody picked up a little bit from it. And um, I really appreciate the time. All right. Thanks, Wendy and Joe, for taking us through your portion of the presentation. I, I think the information that you provided was absolutely critical. 
And again, getting back to the point of the presentation, it wasn't to give everybody all the information that they needed to go out and become super salespeople or super marketing people. What we wanted to provide you were some actionable steps that you could walk away with. Uh, and with that being said, if you have questions, uh, we will be around for a little while answering those. And if we can't get to your question, please feel free to reach out to us. I've uh, posted all of our contact information here. If you scan the QR code, you'll be uh, able to automatically pull our contact information over into your smartphones. So I'll open up the floor now for questions.